Hey guys, this is Andrew with High Level Reviews, and today I'd like to take a look at Chrono Cross. Chrono Cross was developed and published by Square and was released in North America on August 15th, 2000. The game is a follow-up to Chrono Trigger, but more precisely is based on Radical Dreamers, a visual novel situated in the Chrono universe It was created to resolve a few dangling plot lines from Chrono Trigger. Chrono Cross's decision to move away from Trigger's characters and structure inevitably troubled a lot of fans. Despite Cross being critically successful and currently recognized as one of the best RPGs, it was still met with some disdain because of the pronounced disparities and the apparent violation of expectations. Some of this falls firmly on the way the game was being marketed. It was pitched, kind of ambiguously, as a direct sequel to Chrono Trigger, rather than a game based on radical dreamers with some connections to Trigger's world, mind you, some very important connections. While Trigger's characters are tied into Chrono Cross's narrative, some might say shoehorned while others would say skillfully, just really depends on one's take, it's understandable how some might have felt that this simply wasn't the game they expected. The game's director, Masato Kato, addressed his concern by stating, there's no use in making something similar to before, and noted, we're not so weak nor cheap as to try to make something exactly the same as Trigger. Accordingly, Chrono Cross is not Chrono Trigger 2. It doesn't simply follow on from Trigger. As you can probably imagine, this didn't sit well with avid Trigger fans either. Hopefully, those players have revisited this stellar title without the frustration of it not being the sequel they anticipated. The game focuses on Surge, a native of El Nido. Surge's life is simple. The village that he lives in exists in peace and appears to be near idyllic. Serge then inadvertently slips into an alternate dimension, one in which he died ten years prior. On the way to view his own grave, he meets a scrappy and impetuous thief named Kid. You eventually break into Viper Manor and learn some major bombshells about Serge's existence and importance in this universe and story from the Prophet of Time and Lynx, a feline demi-human in pursuit of Serge. Things really start to get trippy about halfway through. You're going to deal with body switching, sentient super computers with biological representations and plenty of other wild creations. And trust me, you might want to read up on multidimensional theories and be prepared to take notes and know your Chrono Universe if you're interested in understanding every nuance of the story. There are numerous major revelations and details that reshape the way you might have previously interpreted the universe. Some that cause apparent contradictions and inconsistencies, but that nonetheless provide hours and hours of debate. Though the game gets more convoluted as it progresses, Chrono Cross's brilliance lies in the detail of the world and the exploration of consequences. Very real consequences. Just moments after entering the alternate dimension, you'll notice different creatures inhabiting the same spots you were exploring only moments ago, different villagers, different behavioral tendencies of local creatures, different goals and ideals for characters. The game displays the change one individual can have on a world, and not to sound too sentimental, but it does so in beautiful ways. For instance, there's a woman that works in a restaurant in Arnie Village that dreams of being a poet. She is full of hope and desire and ambition and just knows her opportunity is right around the corner. However, her alternate version is defeated and pessimistic, no longer cares about her poetry, and is in disbelief that another version of herself even exists. After showing the alternate version a book of poetry written by the other, it inspires her to do it, even if she suspects this might have been a bit of a ruse. Another wonderful example is the character Van, an impoverished boy struggling just to make it. He eventually sees his other self as well, and is astonished to see that, while his other self is rich, very few of his problems have been solved. The differences can also be observed in changes to the landscape and political dealings and conflicts. It's a wonderful study of difference and consequence and the complexities of both. Unfortunately, a lot of important plot points are delivered through text dumps and some of these include some ridiculously major alterations to the game world. And while I applaud some of the characters they created, they just didn't do much with them in terms of development. Which is understandable when you have a cast of 45 playable characters and 12 different endings and the New Game Plus option. But it sorely needed a few more developmental parts to connect the player to Kid and Surge, and I say Kid and Surge because they are the two primary protagonists, despite having 43 other characters. 
or to develop any number of the plethora of characters that had stories just begging to be expounded. I understand shirking character development for an ambitious, multi-layered story that only physicists can understand, but it's hard to continue to care after the third or fourth massive revelation if you don't have something or someone to connect to on a more personal or experience-based level. There are some really cool and innovative ideas, especially in regards to Lynx and Surge's dynamic and how the game explains the existence of some of the major characters and the reasons behind the separate dimensions, and who might be responsible responsible for that split, but some major events fell just a little flat with me due to a lack of connection and genuine care for certain characters. Chrono Cross's story doesn't hold your hand and trusts, or hopes, that you're going to be able to work out the intricacies and, because of this, leaves much open to interpretation, for better or worse. Just visit a Chrono Cross forum and try to follow the various arguments and concepts broached within each discussion. They range from bashing the director for hating Chrono Trigger so much that he vindictively and self-servingly murdered Trigger's cast, to temporal physics and social Darwinism. It's a polarizing title that has a lot of great, and potentially not so great things depending on your slant, for the player to experience. Chrono Cross's combat system takes a traditional turn-based style and adds some very intriguing twists to some core aspects of it. Each character starts with 7 points of stamina and can perform light, medium, or heavy attacks that use up 1, 2, and 3 stamina respectively. It is very reminiscent of Xenogears. The success rate of each attack is shown on screen as a percentage and it varies by the strength of the attack. Each successful attack also increases the percentage for every single attack. Using an element consumes 7 stamina and can put a character in the negative, which disables that character from taking action until you've accrued a bit more stamina. Other characters' attacks and the defend option build up stamina for you. After a certain amount of stamina points have been spent, the enemies can attack. Simple enough. But where the combat really gains traction and strategy is with the element system. All magic, consumables, and character-specific abilities called techs are handled this way. Every character has an element grid that varies, sometimes dramatically, in size. These element grids are divided into eight tiers. Elements you find typically have tiers associated with them, and their power depends on where they are placed on the element grid. You can add power by moving it higher or detract power, but gain access to it earlier by sliding it down. You gain access to different tiers of elements in battle by completing attacks. The higher the power, the more points you're given. And the amount of points you have determines the tiers you can access. Each element is a one-time use in battle. There are six elements, and every element has an opposing element. Nothing particularly groundbreaking, but the strategy and fun comes when you factor in the innate element of every character and the field effect. The field effect tracks the element in the upper left hand of the battle screen and determines the effectiveness of a specific color. Each cast of one color changes one-third of the oval. If you're able to get the entire field to one color, it significantly enhances that color and weakens the opposite. This addition adds an entire layer of depth to the combat. You're constantly trying to boost a character's color or ensure that a powerful enemy isn't able to get a one color field and utilize a massive attack. It's also a prerequisite for the summons, but I found these to be highly situational and generally inefficient. They plainly mishandled this aspect. It's really challenging and cool to set up different character layouts and element grids that complement your style or color preference. The options are innumerable and really enhance the fighting system. What's more, it isn't necessarily forced on you. If you don't care for it and don't want to spend time strategizing, there are plenty of physically strong characters that don't rely on elements and, though you probably couldn't entirely relieve yourself of the elements, you can simplify the way in which you use them so long as you're at least aware of what can be done with it by enemies and take steps to prevent very strong attacks on a one color field. It isn't perfect and can sometimes feel quite cumbersome, but it's still a nice addition and adds a layer of strategy most turn-based systems simply lack. There are also double and triple techs, just like Trigger, and both are pretty cool but not quite as strong as I thought they might be. I actually found myself ignoring them for the majority of the game. Statistical growth is handled differently in Chrono Cross as well. You gain star levels after boss fights, and these levels award stats in different categories. You also have mini growths that occur between star levels but generally only bestow small boosts like a few HP or one random stat boost. There are actually some pretty complicated formulas to determine how these mini growths tie into the star level, but one thing is clear. Chrono Cross's creators didn't want the player to focus on grinding too much. 
They managed to de-emphasize it, and in many ways this is a positive because of how important the story is to the game. They cap your growth after a certain point, and you can't gain anything until the next boss fight. I understand the frustration some players felt because, typically, I tend to really enjoy overleveling in RPGs and slaughtering any story-related material, so this caught me off guard just a bit. You'll certainly still need to grind to acquire materials for weapons, which offer immediate strength as well. And remember, you'll need to get enough materials to forge enough weapons and equipment for a large character pool. You also need to grind for elements because they are used as a currency for some materials, and some very rare materials. Needless to say, you'll probably still get your grinding fix, but it won't be in the way most grind-happy players want. They made this system a little less frustrating by allowing you to run from everything, even bosses. You can re-strategize and return to that spot if it isn't looking too good for you. Monsters are also displayed on screen, so it's easy to avoid any unnecessary battles. Though I thoroughly enjoyed the wrinkles added to the classic turn-based formula, they really could have capitalized more on the potential of such a deep combat system by having far more challenging bosses and optional boss fights. Most of the game's bosses just simply aren't challenging so long as you don't completely mess up your commands. There are so many interesting innovations in the system that I felt they could have pushed it a little further to get more out of it and to truly challenge the player at every turn and at every boss fight. Instead, you end up wiping the floor with most of the bosses and only occasionally are challenged. If they were purportedly emphasizing strategy over grinding, I fear they unfortunately missed the mark for the majority of the game. Still, the combat is highly addictive. As modern games move further away from traditional turn-based fighting systems, this is a game that reminds you just how fun and involved they can be. Graphically, the game is artistically original and beautiful to look at. It's colorful and vibrant and really convinces you that the game world is alive and active. I also loved the numerous cutscenes and the stunning spell effects. This game has some of the best graphics the PlayStation has to offer. Chances are, if you've heard nothing of the gameplay or plot, you've still heard about the wonderfully composed soundtrack. I've mentioned Yasunori Mitsuda in previous reviews, and his brilliance is on full display in Chrono Cross. The soundtrack includes influences from all over the world, including percussive African music, Celtic, and the Mediterranean. Some songs contain dramatic shifts halfway through to really punctuate an emotional moment or experience. In truth, the soundtrack might have single-handedly rescued a handful of moments from flatness. Whether or not you care about Chrono Cross, I recommend listening to this soundtrack as often as possible. Chrono Cross might have frustrated a lot of people hoping for more Chrono Trigger, but it's still a game that truly must be experienced. From one of the deeper turn-based fighting systems to a truly incomparable soundtrack and a complex story that favors inventive mechanics and crazy plot shifts over individual character development, the positives of Chrono Cross outweigh the admittedly frustrating shortcomings. It just has that special something about it, that charm that most RPGs simply lack. It's a classic, and whether or not it disappointed you 15 years ago, it needs to be played and revisited from a more detached stance. The flaws are certainly still there, but you might just give the positives a chance to shine. If you liked the review, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. This has been Andrew with High Level Reviews, and I appreciate you guys stopping by.